It was Revelation 13 and 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And before I go any further, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory as always unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakak, Wadash, which is the Paleo Hebrew for the name of the Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Creator of all energy, being Yahweh, and that of His Son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, being Yahweh Shai. These be the only names in which salvation may be obtained, whether you've been given the Spirit to receive that knowledge or not. I'd like to give double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Great Millstone, who have taught me this truth of the Spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Peace, love, blessing, salutations be unto the elect of the nation of Israel, beginning with the 140 and 4,000 prophets, all the way down to the remaining elect of our nation prophesied to come out with the lies and the deceits of this world and return unto our true identity, man. Return unto the light, you see, which is all made possible through Yahweh Shai. You see, here it is, the scripture I grabbed here, Revelation 13 and 16. This is what prophecy is leading towards, man. You see, Satan causing the whole world to bow the knee unto him, man. Now, when I say the word Satan, what we've been taught all throughout Christianity, all throughout history, all right, was that the spiritual demon Satan was going to pop up the woodwork and cause everybody to take this mark, man. And now, as we're seeing prophecy unfold, as the scriptures say, you see, we would reveal who the wicked was. One scripture that comes to mind is 2 Thessalonians, but I'm going to grab this Habakkuk real quick as well. <clears throat> Actually, you know, I'll grab the 2 Thessalonians. Lord willing, we'll grab Habakkuk in a little bit because it might tie into, uh, you know, another part of this lesson. So we'll go ahead. This is 2 Thessalonians 2. And uh, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And this is the, you know, the, the return of Yahweh Shai, in which he would cause all dominion to cease and to set up the rule, the theocracy of the Heavenly Father, man. That's what Yahweh Shai is going to do. That's why he has his title is what? The King of Kings. He's coming with many crowns to tear down this place and establish a, a, a righteous dominion on this earth, man. All right? So when he comes with the brightness of his coming, what is he going to do? Uh, that wicked will be revealed. Will have been revealed at this time of verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. You see that man? Whose coming is after the works of Satan. This man isn't Satan himself. You're not going to see Satan actually doing anything physically on this earth, man. But you are going to see his physical counterpart. You see? You are going to see Esau eat him. All right, so let me go ahead and continue. Verse 10, it says, And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So they didn't receive the love of the truth. They received the love of this world, man. Verse 11, it says, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusions that they shall believe in a lie. You see that, man? So the whole world has been led astray, which goes all the way back to the prophecies that the earth would be given into the hand of the wicked. You see, Job 9 and 24. So the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. Esau's covered this world with darkness, man. But again, beginning with Yahweh Shai, the light's returned unto us. And now, knowledge has come back to our people, man. We're beginning to realize who the enemy is. We're beginning to realize what righteousness is. We're beginning to realize what sin is, man. We're beginning to, to see this dogma called Christianity that they've put around our Bible to cause the world to be led astray, man, to cause the world to be fooled and, and, and lost, you see? Because who's within this world? The 12 tribes of Israel. As long as they keep you destroyed, as long as they keep the house of royalty broken down, you see, the prophets, the true judges of this earth, then they will continue their reign, man. All right, but as we know, according to prophecy, what is he doing, man? The brightness of his coming will he destroy these wicked. And these wicked, what does it say? And then shall that wicked be revealed. You see, so the wicked are being revealed as we speak, man. Why? Because the prophecies are coming to pass. Again, our whole lives we were told that 
the spiritual demon Satan was going to pop up out the woodwork and cause the whole world to take this mark. And in my mind, even as a child, I was like, "Who? The, oh, this is going to be easy to pass this test because who the hell is going to listen to <laughs> the spiritual demon Satan tell you to do anything, man? Right? Let's go ahead and jump down. It says, verse 17, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the number of his name. Or, so like it, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You see? So, in order to continue living in this world, it's going to reach a point where you will have to bow the knee to his physical counterpart, to the spiritual demon Satan's physical counterpart who is pushing wickedness throughout this earth. You will bow the knee to them and you will be in league with them, which will mark your destruction. You see? Because here in the flesh, all you could see is what's around you, man. And this devil's coming in, he's in great power, and he's, gonna, he's pushing forth these draconian measures to cause all hell, hell to break loose on this world, to cause the whole world to realize that they need these people, man, if they want to survive. So the whole world's going to go ahead and listen to him. But we, which have faith, Lord willing, being part of the elect, you see, the elect will overcome, and the elect will stand firm, they will not bow, bow the knee, and they will endure until the coming of our king, man. Upon their shoulders will the kingdom of heaven be established. You see? But first, we must overcome this great time of Jacob's trouble, which begins with us waking up to this truth, man. Realizing who the wicked is. You see? All this time we went to the enemy for the one of all things, and now we're realizing that this man was set up to lead us astray. You see? They're using these governments to push forth these draconian measures, man. They ain't using the spiritual demon Satan. All right, but it goes even deeper than just the governments, man. Because Yahweh Shai deals with nations. All right. Let me go ahead and continue on this topic. And, you know, Lord willing, we'll see if I get into it today. Or, you know, maybe the, we'll, we'll make the next lesson go into the understanding of the nations. Because you go so far by realizing it's the government. But who controls these governments, man? Who, which nation is in power according to the prophecies, according to what's written in the book of Daniel, man? A nation was prophesied to bear rule during these last days to cause all this wickedness to happen. And this nation will be uprooted, man. When I say nation, I mean the 18 nations within the Bible, not these modern nations which you have to take. You see, we deal with the Bible here, man. Because the Bible is... Is, is where the prophecy takes place, is where the prophecy was foretold. It's like you. Going on, it says, um, oh yeah, let me go ahead and jump up. Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So there's a mark and an image, man. That word mark goes into the Greek meaning karagma, meaning an incision. That's a physical uh, 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 thing, man. Now, verse 15, this is speaking of an image, the image of this world, the, the image of this beast, the beast system of this worldly government, man. The beast system of Esau, in particular. You see? Sin, really, at the end of the day. How has he uh, 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 pushed forth this beast system? Media, news, music, black culture, brown culture. You see? Christianity. So this, this man has spread forth all this wickedness, all this folly for the world to chase after and follow after. And the world will bow the knee to that image. And they will solidify themselves within that by taking this karagma, man. You see? But again, we're realizing who the wicked is because prophecy is unfolding. Let's go ahead and jump back to that 2 Thessalonians 2. And uh, let's jump back a little bit further from where we uh, started. See, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan. So who is that in this world? Let's go ahead and jump back to... Um, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So basically, man, what was going on here in the time of the Thessalonians, being written to the Thessalonians, you had, you know, 
Israelite leaders getting up and leading people astray, saying that they were already, you know, they're already in the kingdom, whatever the case may be. You see how uh, uh, this is the kingdom of heaven. You see Esau's world, it, it, something along those lines, man. For this to had had to have been put pointed out that for that day shall not come except they're coming falling away first. So that day, the return of our king ain't gonna come until our people fall away first. Our people will then return according to the prophecies and what will happen next? And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So there's a man of sin out here, the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan, the son of perdition. Continue in verse four, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And this is Esau. Esau has set himself up above all power on this earth to be worshiped by this world, man. That's why he tries to disprove the works of the Most High, and that's why he has pushed forth sin rather than the law of this Bible, man. When you, even modern science will still prove when you obey the laws of this Bible, you will bring forth life. When you disobey them, it brings forth disease and death, man. This whole world is destroyed. This whole world is filthy, man. You got little girls growing up learning how to twerk at the age of two. By the time they're damn, you know, 20, they've been ran through by, by you know, hundreds and hundreds of men. Breeding forth disease, breeding forth death, you see? Breeding forth a continual cycle of destruction, man. Because then the man's following after it, the children are following after it. Our people have been destroyed, as the scriptures say, for a lack of knowledge, man. We've totally been broken down. We were the kings of this earth. We were the gods of this planet pursuant to the book of Psalms, man. The 12 tribes of Israel. But what happened? We left that so we could be like the heathen. And now you see the condition of the earth due to what we have done, man. So salvation begins, the, the healing of the world begins with us repenting, man, which is why we were given the law, you see, because our enemies have replaced us, ruled by another law, and now the world is crying out for salvation. He's deceived the entire earth by allowing the world to think that he is righteousness, that what he set forth is the way to be, so on and so forth, man. But you got to realize the spiritual demon Satan ain't going to get up and just you know, tell you, hey, I'm the spiritual demon Satan. I'm here to tempt you. And neither is his physical counterpart, man. Hello, I'm, I'm uh, the physical counterpart of Satan, and I'm going to cause you to take this mark, which is going to help, which is going to, which is going to actually uh, uh, sever you from the ties of the heavenly father. No, man, he's going to give you that, make you think you need it. You see, he's the deceiver, man. That's where, that's where the devil means, you see? So anyway, let's go ahead and jump to that book of Habakkuk, and we'll close it up there. This is the book of Habakkuk. Chapter 2. And uh, I'm going to just read a couple verses out of here, man. Verse uh, 5, it says, Yeah, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. So this man is proud. He doesn't stay at home. He goes and conquers other people's homes, who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto himself all nations. Who is this that has done this, man? This is describing the phys physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan. He who is in power on this earth prophesied in the book of Daniel to bear rule, man. This last ion, this last B system before the coming of our king, Yahweh Shai. You see, brought to himself all nations, man. He is as death and heapeth unto him all people. The whole world is under their control. The whole world has followed them. And again, you see these governments that are in power. And, you know, we all know the faces that are behind the scenes, the elites, but the Most High deals with nationalities, man. So that'll be the context of the next, next uh, lesson, Lord willing, tomorrow. Um, it says, Because thou hast spoiled many nations, verse 8, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. So that's what's coming, man. Because of man's blood and the violence, and for the violence of the land, for the city, and all that dwell therein. So hey, man, wickedness is, 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 is going to return to the head of these devils, man. Which is why we, we don't got to lift up anything, man. This is all prophecy. This is all the word of the Most High. This is how we're going to overcome him. Through faith, man. Going on, it says, verse 15, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look upon their nakedness. So that's what he's done, man. He's caused the whole world, put sin everywhere, allowed us to be destroyed, and now he's, you know, looking upon it, man. Looking upon our filth. Verse 16, looking upon our shame, all right? Because that's what that nakedness represents is shame. Back in the time when, you know, it was shameful to be, um, you know, 
naked all before the world, man. Now Esau's came into power and he's caused that to be uh, uh, the norm, so to speak, man. Verse 16, it says, Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be returned unto thee and shameful spewing shall be upon thy glory. Hey, so this devil's going to be exposed just like he exposed us. He's, he's being exposed and that's why we are now able to see who the wicked is, man. So with that, more women's that fine. All praises, honor, and glory. Once again, be it Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shabbat, Hashem, Kodash. Double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS, great millstone of peace, love, blessings, salutations, unto the elect, Shalom.